Welcome back. It is 944. Due to recent events, race relations in the U.S. are a hot topic when it comes to the 2020 presidential election. Here to discuss the election and how both political parties are trying to court minority voters is immigration attorney and KUSI contributor Esther Valdez Clayton. Good morning, Esther. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. So let's talk about this because obviously we have a lot of uh, racial unrest that we're seeing play out in violent scenarios in cities across America right now. You have this idea of law and order versus defund the police uh, to very different uh, schools of thought. Can you can you speak to because I know it's of interest to you being an immigration attorney. Can you speak to how uh, these discussions are playing out in minority communities and how it could transfer to the ballot box? Well, at the heart of all of the unrest is the real need for social change. We've seen the, the shooting of several unarmed African-American people at the hands of police officers. And the protests that we're seeing have devolved to a lot of riots and violence. You noted that last week in the RNC, the Republican Party played this in terms of we are the law and order party and we can establish the rule of law, whereas the Democrats have failed to denounce until recently the violence that has escalated. And in terms, they're openly courting the African-American community and the Latino voters who tend to sway more conservatively on social issues. So in order for the president to win in the upcoming elections, which are less than 100 days away, he recognizes that he's lost a lot of the, quote, suburban moms. To replace that those votes, he's openly courting the African American and the minority votes, which is wondrous for both parties and the race relations here in this country, knowing that he's finally addressing a lot of topics of concern, which are just like any any for any other Americans, the economy, the pandemic, how he handled the coronavirus, jobs and race relations. So and the recent polls demonstrate that it's making an effect. Yeah, we've actually seen uh, the polls swing a little bit more in his favor in some of these um, minority voting groups. Can you can you talk a little bit about the, the from the Democratic perspective? We heard a, a little less on policy issues from Joe Biden and more so on he was the right president because of tone. How does how does that seem to be playing? I think the last few days in light of the Republican National Convention, Joe Biden has really stepped up his game. Not only is he going to uh, leave his home and to go out and visit the uh, various battleground states, but also he has demonstrated uh, an emphasis on denouncing the riots. There was a great editorial over the weekend with Willie Brown, the former San Francisco mayor, saying that the Democratic Party is harming itself if it fails to denounce a lot of the violence and the protests that have escalated at nighttime, he made a great point saying nobody can read a sign and Martin Luther King Jr. never devolved into violence. And this is what's going to make the Democrats lose unless they're able to rein in those extreme factions, which are no longer about social justice. I think as Americans, we're all for social justice. We're all for social change. And the Republicans hammered that down beautifully with over two dozen minority speakers, including senators, including uh, former secretaries of states that harkened back to their immigrant roots. And that has had a huge play with Hispanics and blacks, uh, at least three polls, the Emerson College poll, the Berkeley poll, also the Hill also noticed that he had that the president was able to translate those messages of law and order and messages for the black and Latino community into a two to four percent upswing in his overall approval rating. So he may near the 40 percent that George Bush was able to translate with the Latino vote back in the 2000 election. Right. And, you know, we heard uh, Thursday from CBP the announcement of the extension of the border wall uh, in San Diego, at least. Do we know yet how that is is playing with Hispanic voters? Well, what's really good is that on Thursday when the CBP announced this, that they were going to extend the border wall through the Tijuana River, the site of the 2018 when Central Americans were trying to enter through that area. There was a noted breach there. So they're allowing for community outreach in a period of time in order to effectively study the environmental and the cultural and race relations of the impact of this purported border wall extension. So that is good. They're taking a reflective pause on that. But in terms of policy, the president's numbers with Latino voters, even though he's taken such a hard line on immigration, his his poll numbers tend to sway to the low 30s 
all the way to almost 40 percent, meaning that a lot of Latinos do approve of what he is doing, do approve of how he's handling the coronavirus. But a lot can happen in terms of what the Biden-Harris team has to offer, whether they offer effective immigration reform. They've already said that they would not eliminate DACA. So those are all excellent points. But what I do like is a dialogue in that both parties are finally vying for an electorate that both parties have largely taken for granted or ignored. Yep, you definitely can't do that. Uh, Esther, as always, appreciate uh, your expertise in this area, insight, wonderful. And uh, we have a lot to, to go in the next uh, couple of months. So I know we'll be talking again, but appreciate it. Thank you. All right, we're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back.